Sarah Tucker is a mortgage broker. Uh, Sarah, how on earth did it come to this? Well, ever since the um, mini budget, it's been obviously the news of the day, but it has actually been changing for quite a few months from our point of view. So interest rates have been steadily rising and then they've taken a bit of a sharp rise since the mini budget. In terms of the mortgage market, most recently, the mini budget caused a huge spike. Lenders actually pulled from the market because of the swap rate spike. The swap rates are, in essence, what the banks use to base their interest rates on. Um, And this time last year, they were 0.80, just to give you some perspective. And and they were 5.8 at the start of last week. Um, And they were rising really sharply in a matter of days. So what that meant for lenders is all of a sudden, you know, they pulled from the market, lots of them, because they thought, how high is this going to go? They needed to reevaluate. They needed to reprice all of their rates. Um, But that caused absolute carnage, obviously, for mortgage brokers and for borrowers, because they weren't able to actually submit applications that they previously thought they could. And what that means is basically borrowers are paying more for their mortgages and it's affecting um, not just first time buyers or or home movers, but people that are remortgaging off of fixed rates that perhaps were fixed during COVID and classed as COVID cheap rates. And they're seeing a huge increase in their monthly repayments, which is causing them a great deal of panic in the face of rising costs of living and everything else that they're dealing with financially coming into the winter as well, approaching Christmas. We've got a couple of uh, people that we've spoken to on the podcast this morning, uh, Glenn and Lydia. I'm going to give you their kind of stories and and, and see what advice you might be able to give them, Sarah. Let, let, let's start with Glenn. Uh, he's on a, a five-year fixed rate at 1.9%, but it's coming up for renewal next year. He had been expecting maybe 3%, 4%, but, you know, 6%. He is con- incredibly concerned about whether or not he can he can genuinely afford to keep in the property, right. which itself is, is shared ownership uh, with the local council. Okay. What should he be doing now? Um, he definitely needs to look at it seven or eight months before his fixed rate ends. Traditionally, we would have usually said three months in the past, and then we increased that to six months before. Um, and now we're increasing it even further. And that's because of a few things. One, you can book your rate as early as six months in advance with some lenders. And with the pace that the rates are increasing, that could make a huge difference if he can fix his rate, you know, for example, this side of the year, um, as opposed to next year, he may find he gets a much cheaper rate um, than, than next year. So that's the first reason. But also service levels with lenders have also increased dramatically. So it's taken us much longer to get mortgage offers than it ever has. Um, so we try and get people really organised. Because he's on shared ownership, that does create a little bit more complex answers. So we definitely want to spend some time researching that. But once we know what his monthly payments are going to look like and what his rate would look like, um, he can prepare for that. And if he really doesn't think he can afford it, then we'd look at the options in between. Um, With shared ownership, it does restrict us a bit more than a normal mortgage. Um, But traditionally, I'd look at perhaps the term that he's on at the moment, Um, When we first do mortgages for people, our our instinct is to try and get them to pay off as quickly as possible in a way that they can afford it. Um, But at the moment, our advice is obviously looking at how they can sustain their monthly payment for the next two to five years. Um, But really, we've just got to dive into it and, and see how bad it actually is because... Inter- there are still some interest rates sort of starting with a four um, and there are some with a five percent um, at the moment. But my main message is there are options. You know, I don't like people panicking. If he really doesn't think he can afford it, then we'd look at all of the options that he has got to keep the mortgage, but maybe make some amendments to it. it and just a general point that kind of flows from, from Glenn's experience. I mean, he is a he is a freelancer. He's one of those many, many people that, that lost their jobs uh, during the COVID period. But of course, as a, as a freelancer, you know, your month to month can change and, you know, missing a mortgage payment can, can therefore have a, a pretty significant effect on, on your credit rating. I mean, if, if you find yourself in that at that point of, of really worrying about not being able to meet the payment that is in a few weeks time, what should we be doing? Don't get a payday loan is my first message because 
lots of people get those and they're readily available. Um, a payday loan, for those that don't know, is some is short-term money that you can access quickly. But what people don't realise is that is it destroys your chances of getting a mortgage later down the line. It's one of the hardest things for us to get around if we see that on a credit report. You do want to keep up repayments, but if you really, really don't think you're going to be able to, the first place you need to ring is your lender to see what they can do. And if you've been someone that's made overpayments over the last few years, which some people did during COVID because some people had more money at that period, um, you can take payment holidays that won't affect your credit score. Um, but otherwise, your your lender could arrange a payment holiday for you, but it is likely to show up on your credit report. So you just need to weigh it all up. Some good advice there. Um, we've also been speaking to Lydia, who's kind of currently in the process of, of renewing uh, the mortgage for the house. Her situation is this. They were on a two-year mortgage at 3.15. That went up to 3.4 at renewal. It's now up up above a four percent they they had the offer given to them at last tuesday they've got they've got three weeks to sign it but their concern is you know what, what's going to happen over the next three weeks i mean should they just go ahead get this deal done or is there is it worth their while kind of use taking advantage of the three weeks that they've got to sign this and uh, and seeing what happens okay yeah i mean we would always say look at the market um, so I'm interested to see sort of the reasons why they can only stay with their lender. It might just give them peace of mind to just speak to an expert and say out of interest if I was to remortgage on the market how much less is the rate or they might be pleasantly surprised to find the rate that they're on is actually very competitive um, but like like we can hear it's that what if thinking what if I'm doing the wrong thing what if there's a better rate out there for me it sounds like they have a a very good rate there that they can go into considering what's happening in the market obviously I don't know sort of the details of their loan to value and things like that but it, it doesn't sound like it's gone up a huge amount compared to some people that we're dealing with and if they're comfortable with that monthly repayment I guess the message is um by all means look at the other options but at some point you've got to sort of shut off that what I'm thinking and look at I've got this rate we can afford it um we're fixed then for the next however many years that rate's fixed for um and put it put it out of your mind really because you can send yourself into spirals if you just keep wondering if you're doing the right thing it sounds like you are yeah, I hear you on the spiralling. All of us, all of us who've got a mortgage must be thinking very, very seriously about it at the moment. But I wonder, speaking more generally again, Sarah, you know, the, the expectation is that we are going to see house prices dropping significantly as a result of the fact that perhaps, you know, all this uncertainty around the high cost of borrowing, you know, there, there might just not be as many people purchasing houses. Now, what, what does that mean uh, for the marketplace? Yeah, I mean, I think it's such a funny subject because since COVID, I think it's probably the biggest thing people have said to me is the housing market's going to crash and we're expecting it at this date and then it moves forward to the next year and then it moves forward again and since 2020 we've seen nothing but increases in the house prices and they haven't come down at all and even now they're easing but they're still not coming down they've technically risen still this month so we there is no guarantee that it will happen and particularly if the government step in the, the actions they take have a huge effect on whether the housing market goes down in value or not. The stamp duty holiday is the best example of that because just as everyone expected the property prices to drop, we had lots of first-time buyers waiting in the wings thinking, I'm going to wait for the perfect moment to strike. It never happened. The stamp duty holiday made everything go absolutely crazy and house prices went nuts after that. If it does come down, I don't know how much it's going to come down by because it's all about demand and we're still seeing a lot of people want to move and every agent that we're speaking to, they're not as busy, but they're still busy and they're still selling multiple properties every week. If the housing market does come down, it's always responsive to demand and historically there's been not enough supply and too much demand. So we've got space for that to still level um, before it becomes the other way. So it's going to be very, very interesting, I think, to see what actually happens and um, depending on what the government decide to do, how the housing market will then respond. 
so is there anything they can do? Because if, if the government doesn't act, if interest rates remain where we roughly think they're going to be, I mean, we, we could be seeing thousands of people losing their home, like back in the 2008 financial crisis. Yeah, I, I think the biggest thing we have to learn from what happened previously, and that is the worst thing that can happen, is that people all over the country start to default on their mortgages, um, because that's when everybody loses. I like to think we've learnt so much from that time, just in the the borrowing and the affordability and the measures that we have to go through to get people a mortgage now compared to then is hugely different. Um, So I like to think that the industry and and the banks have really learnt from that period and are not willing to put themselves in that position um, but of course as interest rates creep up you're you're right um, some households just won't have an option any other option um, so they're going to have to be very careful about how high they let these rates go if, if they don't I mean could it be as bad if not worse than the last crash I hope not I, I am very much glass half full and I really do have... You, you might have picked up I'm not. <laughs> yeah, I do have a lot of faith in the industry, genuinely. We react, uh, the mortgage market in general reacts very quickly. And, and it does go in cycles, though. When things are booming, it normally signifies the point that you're just about to go down. Um, and then it will reset again. And um, all of the signs were there. You know, rates were low. Property prices were high. Demand was high. Everything has ticked that particular theory's box. So we were um, waiting to see what would happen next, whether it would follow suit. And yeah, if you look, it it generally does. So I think that's what we're now experiencing is that pinch point. And it's just how, how low it goes, basically. Despite the current Downing Street mantra that it's the Bank of England that sets interest rates, that it's somehow the bank's fault and not the government's, the bank is doing so largely in response to the fiscal decisions taken by the PM and Chancellor. So it seems almost inevitable that we will have to see some form of government intervention. It's possible that when we hear from the Chancellor in late November that there will be something of a break put on interest rates. But increased mortgage costs are now priced in for us all. Far from an Englishman's home being his castle, it just became his folly. My thanks to Sarah Tucker, to Glenn and Lydia, and of course to you for listening to the Sky News Daily, hosted by me, Neil Patterson. This edition was produced by Rosie Gillett and Alice Bowen. Our editor is Philly Bowman.